chain of excellence, like start... putting putting a couple of positive states together. Yeah, we've done yeah. we've done uh, some stacking. Uh, we've done a chain of excellence and a, like a chain of love. Okay. Or, or a, yeah, with a, a different circle, name. Circle of love, circle of confidence, uh, circle of excellence. Yeah, yeah. I think we might yeah. have done a meditation circle as well, where we had all these meditative states like like peace, joy, and gratitude all on top of each other. Hi there, Adrian here, and this is a video from a Zoom session that we do. We do these Zoom sessions every Sunday, and we take questions and answers from the audience, some of our students, some of our members. We never know what questions are coming up, so I'm always excited to do these sessions, and I hope to see you at one of them. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below, and check out the other playlists that we have. Thank you, enjoy. We, we usually start um, our respiration, that means our breath, to adjust our inner balance. Uh, when we change our respiration and our physiology changes automatically, then also our state changed and also then we change our behavior. So yeah, new code NLP have a lot of games, a lot of techniques about that. And yes, uh, usually it takes five to 10 minutes for a client reflecting this kind of a picture, i.e. and a very low coherence state. And we, we use, we apply this, all other techniques. So it's, it's very fast for them to see the difference. So when we, try to use different techniques uh, to make the positive change with our clients. Usually we need to make this happen and this beautiful state. I still remember um, in Bali, yeah, Adrian, is that John, yeah? Our photographer, uh, your friend, has he in charge of that, John? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Of... John introduced me to NLP about uh, 15 <laughs> years ago. And John introduced me 15 years ago and he was having uh, some real pain. I think it might have been food sickness or something. And uh, Kevin put him into a trance uh, on John's request. And uh, something like 10, 12 hours later, like the next, yeah. that evening, the next morning, John was like bright eyed and he's like, that's the best sleep and the deepest trance I've ever had. So Kevin put him into a deep restorative sleep. You put him into a deep sleep and just left him there to recover with some suggestions or something? Yeah, about I can't remember what suggestion I gave him. I only remember that a lot of people came in and out, made a lot of noises, but I didn't interrupt John. He was in deep um, sleep. I can show you the video. Um, I, I interviewed him. Oh. And I, I, yeah, I did give him suggestion. And I said, uh, when I count to 10, you will be in deep sleep. And you will be in deep sleep for 20 minutes. And he was in very deep sleep. You may think that he cannot understand, but actually he under he heard everything. And it's not his conscious, but his unconscious. So when I interviewed him, I asked him, how long had you, you know, slept? He said, I don't know. I said, you do, come on, there's a voice to you. It just came to you, tell me. He said, 20 minutes? I said, yeah, exactly 20 minutes. But how did you know? He said, I don't know. I said, your unconscious told you because I told you unconscious. So this is a traditional and a classical um, hypnosis. Uh, again, I would like to mention, um, I, mean, I treat a lot of people with um, insomnia. So and uh, do, do, do you know a company, a very big project company named Flua? It's an American company. It's top 150. Uh, and also it's a joint project with a shell, a Dutch company a petrol company. So they're building a very big vessel. Uh, in that vessel, there is a plant factory. So that, that's a very big project. Um, it's, a one th it's over a thousand thousand. Um, no, it's, 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 it's over a hundred, it's, it's over a million US dollars, I think. No, not a million. I think it's, it's mm. ah. It's a probably thousand billion. I forgot, but it's, it's, it's rather big. But they've got a problem. So there are over 10,000 workers working on that project, that same vessel. And altogether, 180 um, staff uh, in, working in offices. 
and there are around 40 foreign staff, and most of whom are British. And, they, and most of them haven't been home back to Britain for over two years since the pandemic started in 2020. And uh, the general manager, Graham, he, he showed me some pictures of very young children. He said, that these are my grandsons <laughs> and my granddaughters, but I haven't met, met them. Uh, so you can imagine people working under very big pressure. And in most of the cases, they can only stay in the yard with a bill of the whistle. And it, around two months ago, a British guy, he, he committed suicide by jumping off the building. So 21st floor. And you can imagine what happened when he jumped on the ground. And his friend, some with relationship for 15 years, some even 18 years, they know a long time ago, and because in a foreign country, so they spent most of them together. So when this tragedy happened, a lot of people, especially those foreign people, especially other British, so with whom they spent time together mostly, that they suffered, actually it's an acute stress disorder, a lot of um, different difficulties. And when I was in insomnia, and um, the most close, uh, the closest friend, his name is Robert. Robert uh, he's from Scotland. Um, and he couldn't fall into sleep and he started to shake every day. Um, and every day when he looked at the, the seat of um, that British gentleman, it's empty. So he started, he couldn't stop it. Um, so insomnia is a big problem. I used NLP technique. I first hypnotized him to about three to um, four grade. Um, I used a technique I created. Uh, so this is something I'm going to share with you later. When I finish my, my, my speech, I will share with you. Um, so I hypnotize him. It only takes like 15 minutes. He's a very kind British gentleman. Where to be, he said, Kevin, it's not, my, it's not your fault. If, I'm, I'm, if I am not able to sleep here in this noisy office, it's not your fault. Because you were in my cozy bed, and in the late night, I couldn't fall asleep. I said, okay, let me try. So about 18 or 15 or 20 minutes later, I started to fall into very good sleep. And the next day, I got feedback from their whole headquarters. He said, Robert told him he's 100 times released. I also use the empty chair technique. So I introduced Robert to talk to the British gentleman who, who did just lost. So it's fine. And after my first uh, work with them for two days, and the headquarter Asia of Asia flew uh, based in Manila in Philippines, they invited me to continue my work. And I finished another six days, and now they invited me to work with them more, and um, uh, one day every week. So it really works very well to get rid of anxiety, and a lot of other different things with them. So usually I work with 10 different clients every day and working with, in their offices. So hypnosis is very fast working with uh, treatment in, in so, so many. Okay, I uh, will carry on. Come on, next slide. They have to get into trance state. So first of all, I'd like to introduce a little bit of traditional hypnosis. When I mention about hypnosis to most of the people, in their mind, it probably images about traditional hypnosis, in which there is a, usually it's a, it's a man. Usually this man looks very cool and he possesses some very special ability. And the people looking at his fingers or eyes are slowly is talking, 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 and people slowly fall into a sleep or a completely different stage. So in this scenario, they emphasize the importance of uh, hypnotist, and they also differentiate clients who is easily hypnotized, who's more difficult, and in which way to hypnotize a person. But again, now I would like to mention about Erickson hypnosis. There is a reason why NLP introduced Erickson in there, because Erickson emphasized the interaction between the hypnotist or therapist and the clients. He believes that neither is the most important part. And second, he think 
the present is the most important. And he insists to use all the present and develop all the techniques to help and put the client into hypnotic state. So he refuses to use scripts. He says that's not fair, that's unfair with our client. But my opinion is we need to make an integration or a, a combination of traditional hypnosis and Ericsson hypnosis. Traditional hypnosis works very well because it's making regulations and makes the rules and procedures for starters to start with. This is a little bit like an NLP practitioner. And for master practitioner, you may find that all the processes may not work well. And a master of NLP can flexibly use your thinking, your judgment to work with your client, you know, the different things. I still remember Adrian taught me a very new pattern, uh, the five star pattern, right, Adrian? I thought it's very useful when we use uh, new code NLP. And after that, I also started to create my own patterns. So that's master, a little bit like uh, Ericsson. Ericsson mentioned and started people's unconscious mind. As today, it's, it's not a surprise for us to understand that our unconscious mind is a lot of times, some people say a million times, some said a thousand times more powerful than our conscious mind. We have proved a lot about that. Um, so I actually believe that trance happen every day to every to very degrees. For example, when we drive our car to our office or when we drive back. So we already have that program in our mind. We just obey that. Or otherwise, when we listen to music, for example, the music Adrian just played, and we are in you know, we swing our waist and in a very beautiful trance state. And also other substances when I train in marketing my clients, a lot of advertisement on television, actually that's trans state. Um, I know a lot of Chinese examples, not quite familiar with foreign, but for example, um, the advertisement on TV for McDonald's or KFC. So they slowly put you into a trans state and they change your mind or your kid's mind so that when your kids want to spend some time to eat out, they may say, I want KFC or McDonald's. Uh, he also says it's not necessary to put people into very deep trance state. Even people are in conscious state, they also gradually absorb your suggestions. I mean, they're unconscious. So there is uh, two different ideas. Um, about a hundred years ago, there are two most famous hypnotists in um, Austria. In Austria, yeah. One is uh, Sigmund Freud, and the other is called Breer. Both of them are Jewish. Uh, the Sigmund Freud thought it is necessary to put people into very deep hypnotic state, i.e., like the picture I just showed you, the very deep hypnotic trance state. While Breer thought it's not necessary, he, only if only the people is in a transferable state and they start to work. So Breer successfully healed a lot of people, but Sigmund Freud struggled to put people into very deep trance state. So he failed most of the cases. Uh, he was not happy with hypnosis. Uh, so this is why he, he got rid of uh, hypnosis from uh, psychoanalysis. But later he introduced another very similar technique. But actually I think it's also hypnosis. Boom! You made it here! Good on you! Make sure you click the subscribe button below and check out the playlist at the end. If you'd like to come along to our Sunday sessions where we host a live free Q&A for our students and members, you're welcome. I'll see you there.